Electronics. Today's video we are going to see the part 3 of ISRO exam preparation and we are preparing for ISRO scientist electronic post and we are seeing the previous year questions. So let's see what is the first question for today's class. The following finite state machine is used to detect a particular pattern. Output is set to 1 if input is matched else set to 0. For which of the following screen output goes 1 twice? So this is a sequence detector type of question. So in order to answer this question, you should have an idea about finite state machines. There are mainly two type of finite state machines, Mele uh, machine and Moore machine. We have already done a video on Mele and Moore machine. So if you are not familiar with the concept, please do watch that video. So uh, in this type of, uh, in this figure, if you uh, look at the figure, this is a Mele type of sequence detector. So in order to uh, find whether it is a melee type or a more type of sequence detector, you just have to see where how the input is given. So here, uh, if you see the branches, there is 0 bar 0, there is 1 bar 0, like that the uh, input is given, right? So this is input bar output. So for a melee machine, we are giving the uh, or we are drawing the state diagram like this. So this is a melee machine. If it was a more machine, then each state will be associated with its corresponding output. But for the case of a melee machine, always whenever you are giving an input, the output also depends on the input and hence we will be giving like input bar output. So that is the difference between the melee and the more machine. So and also whenever we are uh, going to detect a sequence, in the case of a melee machine, it requires if there is n number of bits, bits in the sequence, it requires n number of states to detect the bit. For example, if you are going to detect a sequence 1, 0, it consists of 2 bits, right? So it requires 2 states for designing a sequence detector. If it consists of 3 number of bits, means it requires 3 states. So that is the case for a melee state machine. And if you are designing a sequence detector using the melee state machine, it will be the case. So for this question, what they are asking is that this is a sequence detector for detecting some pattern and we are not aware of what is the sequence and we don't know how many bits is there in that sequence. But they are asking that uh, if 4 out of 4 these sequences, that is the 4 options, which sequence or which stream will produce output 1 and that will be produced twice. So we have to find that. So for finding that first we have to identify what is the sequence this sequence detector is trying to detect. The sequence which this sequence detector is trying to detect is having how many number of bits? 1, 2, 3, 4. It consists of 4 number of bits because since it is a melee machine and since a melee machine sequence detector needs the, the number of bits in the sequence is equal to the number of states. So for that condition, we know that the sequence which this detector is detecting will be having 1, 2, 3, 4 bits. So this is a 4 bit sequence which this sequence detector is detecting. Now we have to identify what is the sequence. So in order to identify that sequence, we have to look into the state machine figure. So S0 is the initial state and whenever there is a progress in the sequence, that is whenever there is a progress in the sequence to be detected, uh, is coming from the input stream, it will move to next state, right? So from S0, when a 1 is received, it is moving to S1. When again a 1 is received, it is moving to S2. And when a 0 is receiving, it is moving to S3. And from S3, when a 1 is receiving, it is moving back to S1 and here for this case it is giving an output of 1 right. So the sequence this detector is detecting is 1, 1, 0 and 1 because when this 1, 1, 0 and then 1 is received it is giving an output of 1 right. So the sequence detector is detecting a sequence of 1, 1, 0 and 1. So this is the sequence which this particular sequence detector is detecting. Out of these four streams, which stream is giving a 1101 1, 1, 
twice because if 1101 is occurring two times only then the sequence detector will give an output of one two times right that is it will produce two ones whenever this sequence is happening two times right so we have to look into these streams that out of which of this four is having this 1101 two times so first let's check for the first stream there is a 1101 here right there is no other 1101 so this is not your answer so let's look into the second option so here there is there is no 1101 so it won't give even a single output one so that is also wrong next see the third stream or the third option here so here there is a 1101 once again there is a 1101 so it is having two 1101s right okay so this is your answer again anyway we will see the last option also there is no 1101 for this stream so it won't give any output right so for the option c this particular stream is having a 1101 two times and hence the sequence detector will produce output as one two times. So the correct answer for this question is your option C. The question which we are going to discuss today is this. A communication channel is having a bandwidth of 3000 hertz. The transmitted power is such that the received SNR is 1023. The maximum data rate that can be transmitted error free through the channel is what? So you have to find what is the maximum data rate possible in order to have error free transmission. So this is a question from digital communication systems and we have given the bandwidth and also the SNR right. So from this two terms you can connect these two terms with the channel capacity that is the Shannon's channel capacity equation the Shannon's channel capacity this is actually the Shannon Hartley channel capacity equation so that is given by C equal to B log 2 1 plus SNR so we are going to transmit this signal through a channel right so we are using a channel and in order to have error free transmission through the channel what data rate you have to follow is the question so so first that so for that first we have to identify what is the capacity maximum capacity of the channel so for that we can use this equation which is a channel channel capacity equation that is given by channel capacity c equal to b log 2 1 plus snr so here both the terms are given b is 3000 right so 3000 into log 2 1 plus 1023 so 1 plus 1023 is 1024 right so 1024 so if you take log 2 1024 you will get 10 so it will be into 10 so you can write it as 30 kilobits per second is your channel's capacity now in order to have the error free transmission we have to follow one rule that the channel capacity should be greater than or equal to the r that is the data rate so if you are following this rule then the maximum capacity possible will be or the maximum data rate possible will be equal to the channel capacity right so beyond that it will cause errors so in order to have an error free transmission we have to follow this rule that is the channel capacity should be greater than or equal to the data rate or in reverse we can say the data rate should be less than or equal to the channel capacity or maximum up to the channel capacity the data rate is possible so the maximum data rate is asking so the maximum data rate is possible and the answer is 30 kilobits per second which is your channel capacity itself Okay, so the answer for this question is option B, 30 kilobits per second. This question which we are going to discuss is from the rectifier session. So what is a rectifier doing? A rectifier is converting AC to DC, right? So if you are giving a 
analog, uh, AC alternating current or a sine wave to the input, it will give a DC output. So here we are going to uh, answer a question about full wave rectifier. So a full wave rectifier delivers 50 watt to a load of 200 ohm. Okay. If the ripple factor is 2 percentage, calculate the AC ripple across the load. So, they are asking for the AC ripple across the load. The answers are A, 2 volt, B, 5 volt, C, 4 volt and D, 1 volt. So, before answering this question, you should have an idea about the full wave rectifiers diagram. Okay, so, there is a transformer, there is a primary and you are giving a AC signal to the input of the full wave rectifier. This is the primary winding. This is the secondary winding. Okay. This is your secondary. There are two diodes. And this will be your load. If it is a simple full wave rectifier, this is your diode 1, this is your diode 2, this is your load. And across which will be you will be receiving your what signal? DC signal. So you are giving an AC to the transformer's primary winding and you will be receiving a DC signal at the output. So this is how the general or the basic structure of a full wave rectifier is like. Now what are they asking? They are asking for the AC ripple across the load. So before answering the ripples part, you have you should have an idea about the ripple. So what is a ripple means? You are going to convert an AC to DC, right? So even if you convert the AC to DC, there will be some AC elements, that is alternating current elements or some fluctuations present in the DC output. These fluctuations or variations in the DC value is called the ripple. Okay, so that is the ripple. Now, the ripple value or gamma is given by V AC by V DC. That is the AC voltage by DC voltage. Or we can say it as the ratio of AC variations or AC signal present in your DC output is your ripple factor. So, these things you should identify or you should understand. Now, the question is, a full wave rectifier is delivering 50 volt to a load of 200 ohm means they have given 50 volt and this is the DC power or PDC is given. Because this power is being delivered to the load means it is present at the output side. So this power is the DC power which is given and this power is being delivered to the 200 ohm which is your load resistor value. So this is your PDC, right? So your PDC is given as 50 watt. Now, if the ripple factor is 2 percentage, calculate the AC ripple, right? Now we have to find the AC ripple voltage or AC ripple value across the load, right? So we have to find this VAC, we have to find. So we have to find VAC. We have this ripple factor actually it is given that 2 percentage that the ripple factor is 2 percentage means gamma equal to 2 by 100 that is 2 percentage which is equal to 0 0.02 is your gamma value or your ripple factor value so we have the ripple factor we have to find the vac and we have to find what is vdc right so vdc can be found from this pdc so we have given the power that is a DC power we have given as 50 volt and also we know that the load resistor value equal to 200 ohm right. So we can find the DC voltage or VDC at the output side and the equation is PDC equal to we know that the power is equal to voltage square by R or V square by R. So VDC square by RL is the equation DC square by RL. So we have to find this VDC from this equation because we have given the PDC and the RL value. So we can write VDC equal to square root of PDC into RL. 
So if we substitute the value of PDC and RL here, this will be 50 into 200 that is equal to 100 volt. So we DC value we got as 100 volt and we have to substitute this VDC value in this equation. So this is equation number 1. Then we will get the value of VAC. So from this equation number 1 we can write VAC equal to ripple factor into VDC. So ripple factor is 0 0.02 into 100 which is equal to 2 volt. So 2 volt is your AC ripple value across the load. So in this question we have to find the AC ripple voltage across the load and we have given the power that is a DC power and the load resistor value and also we have been given the ripple factor in this question. So first we have to find the DC voltage across the load that is VDC then we have to substitute that in this equation that is Ripple factor is equal to VAC by VDC, whereas ripple factor is given as 0 0.02, that is 2 percentage, and we have we can obtain the value of VAC, and the value we have obtained here is 2 volt, and the correct answer for this question is option A, 2 volt. So these are the questions which I have included in this video. If you want a separate subject-wise preparation, then please go watch on the videos of gate preparation, where we are doing uh, questions on subject-wise. Okay, I really hope the video was useful for your ISR preparation. If yes, please do share this video with your friends and also family. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.